Okay, this is lesson 1.2 arithmetic series. Um, we're going to see that series and sequences are somewhat related, but also somewhat different. Um, so let's get started. A series is different than a sequence. A series is a sum of the terms in a sequence. An arithmetic series is the sum of the terms in an arithmetic sequence. We will soon visit other types of series or sequences, mainly geometric. So, for example here, what I have highlighted, 3, 9, 15, 21. That was a sequence that we dealt with last unit. For instance, the first term was 3. Uh, the common difference here would be 6. All right. And uh, so we dealt with things like that. The only thing different with a series, as you can see right here, is that we're going to put plus signs in between there. So a series is basically asking what the, the total is worth. All right? And so what we're going to use to denote that is this S sub n right here. S sub n represents the sum of the first n terms of a series. Right? So let's give this uh, a little bit of a try for the sequence that we had above. So in order to calculate um, an arithmetic series, here's where we do it. So for instance, if I ask you what's the sum of the f uh, first one, or up to one terms, it's obviously just equal to what the first term is. So for instance, if we said s sub 1 is equal to t1, then we would say s sub 1 is equal to 3, because our first term was 3. The sum of the first two terms is just equal to the first term plus the second term. So with the example above, I would say 3 plus 9. And so I could say that the sum of those together, of course, is 12. Not exactly rocket science. The sum of the first three terms is just t1 plus t2 plus t3. So we add all those together. We have 3 plus 9 plus 15, and that's equal to 27. And lastly, if we want the sum of the first four terms, we add all four of those terms together, 3 plus 9, plus 15, plus 21, and we get 48. All right. These are all examples of partial sums. We call them partial sums because they're just a part of this series. The series may have more than first four terms, three terms, two terms. It's just we found a partial sum. All right. So if there are a few terms, Sn, can be determined using mental math. So for instance, yeah, we could have kept going like that. I could have found out what the sum of the fifth, the five, first five terms is, the sum of the six terms, and so on. Um, that's not the end of the world. But what, of course, I'm going to do is I'm going to kick it up a notch on you guys, and I'm going to ask you, like, what's the sum of the first 1,000 terms? All right. And so then if you were just sitting there hammering numbers into your calculator, that could get a little bit old. So. Um, we will uh, we'll be going over um, this these two equations right here. Um, but in class, what we're going to do specifically is we're going to talk about the proof. All right. So here's the second formula of the year: the sum of the n terms of an arithmetic sequence. All right. So there's two of these, and so I'll explain kind of why there's two of these. It says for an arithmetic series with first term t1, so t1 just represents the first term. Common difference, of course, is d, and the nth term t sub n. Uh, the sum of the first n terms, s sub n, is calculated in this way. So to get the sum of the n amount of terms, we take however many terms we have. So let's say we had 10 terms. We add the first term. And then this right here, you might want to make note of this, this essentially represents the last term. And why I say that, like let's say I'm looking for the sum of the first 10 terms. Well then, that means that I have to put t10 right in right there. All right. So I'll erase all that. So that's one equation. Now. You can also use this next one right here. Okay, and this next one will be used, uh, I would say, oh, maybe 10 to 20 percent of the time, not quite as as often. And if you look, it really is the same thing. But I'll show you what they've done. If I highlight this part right here, right, what they've done is they've replaced Tn with the equation that we had last day. So if you remember, Tn is equal to T sub 1 plus n, sorry, plus d onto n minus 1. So they really have all of that. If you're wondering where this 2 comes from, it's because we have a t1 there and a t1 there, therefore we have two of them. 
All right. And so um, we're going to go through an example where we're going to have to use this one over the other one. All right. But you're going to see 80% of the time we're going to use that first equation. All right. And I made a little note here. Notice that the second form has the general term of the arithmetic sequence. That's what I had right there. Um, substituted in for it. All right. Let's try an example. All right. Example uh, one here. Determine the sum of the first six terms of this uh, arithmetic series. All right. So the six terms are written there. You might say, well, why not just hammer them into your calculator? And you're exactly right. It's probably, it might even be quicker to do that. Um, but I just wanted to show you a basic one here. In the future, what I might say is, of course, uh, find the sum of the first 600 terms. So write down the information we have. How many terms are we dealing with? We have six that we're looking for here. Uh, do we know the first term? We sure do. First term is 25 here. Do we know the last term? We know that t sub 6, or the last term, of course, for this, is negative 30. All right. Now I'll write our equation formula that we had on the uh, previous page. T, sorry, Sn is equal to n, all multiplied by t1, our first term, plus our last term, all divided by 2. So how many terms do we have? We have 6. First term was 25. The last term was negative 30. And we divide by 2. Okay, make sure we simplify here. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways to go about simplifying this. I'll show you guys how I like to do it. I'm going to go 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, and then I'll simplify in the brackets. 25 plus a negative 30. Remember, when you have these two terms, you have a negative. That gives you a negative 5. 5 times, sorry, negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Okay. It's relative straight, relatively straightforward to, uh, to do one like that. Um, like I said, you could have probably added all those together. Example 2. All right, so recall, as you're going through these examples, if you think you can do one of these or you want to try one on your own, I would just pause the video, give it a go, and, uh, and then play it through and check see if you got the right answer. I think you're going to gain a lot more doing it that way. So an arithmetic series has first term 3. So let's write that one down. Common difference is equal to negative 4. Good. Um, they say determine the sum, this is what this means, determine the sum of the 25 terms. So therefore we know that n is equal to 25. So they're looking for s sub 25. Okay. Now, if you compare this to the question we had above right there, there's one thing that we need in this equation, I'll circle this equation, that we don't have. We don't have tn. We don't know what tn is equal to. So what we need to do is we need to find out. So I'll write this as a little note. Since we need tn, which essentially is going to represent your last term here, use the second formula. All right. So that second formula is going to be used when we do not know tn. So I'll show you how this is all going to work. It's actually pretty easy. So Sn, the sum of the n terms, is equal to, and remember I'm taking the second formula, n all multiplied by 2 times t1, whoops, not ti, t1, plus a common difference times n minus 1, all divided by 2. So substitute in the information we know. We know that n is 25. 2 times the first term, the first term was 3. Common difference is negative 4. And then I'm just going to simplify this. n minus 1, of course, is just going to give us 24. All divided by 2. Okay, so let's simplify. We have 25. Kind of running out of real estate here, but 25. 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, negative 4 times 24. Well, I know that 4 times 25 is 100. So 4 times 24 must be 96. And we have a negative. All divided by 2. And I'll try and crunch it in here. We have 25. And then 6 minus 96 is going to give you negative 90. Negative 90 divided by 2 is negative 45. And if we multiply those together, let's take a look here, we get negative 1,125. And so what did we just figure out? We found out that when we had first term 3, a common difference of negative 4, that the two sum of the 25 terms would be negative 1,125. Okay? So recall, this is an important example, number two, that we want to use this second formula when we do not know what Tn is. Okay? 
Uh, two more examples. This one we have an arithmetic series has the sum of the first 15 terms. This time they're giving us that information uh, is 93.75. The common difference is 0.75 and the 15th term is 11.5. All right, so just a little bit different uh, question with the information that they're given. I like to, of course, write down the stuff on this side of the page. Some of the first 15 terms is 93.75. You'll notice that they tried to make this question a little bit more funky on you um, because they gave you some decimals, but life goes on. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so that's the information that they give us for sure. Since they're referencing the sum of the first 15 terms in T sub 15, we know that n is also equal to 15. All right. So they want you to determine the first three terms of the series. Well, since we know the common difference right here, if we could just find out the first term, or t sub 1, then we can find the next terms by simply just adding that 0.75 each time. All right, so t sub 1 is really what we're looking for. So the equation that has all of that is the first equation. It's the s sub n is equal to n, all multiplied by our first term, plus our last term, tn, all divided by 2. All right. And so if you look, what we're going to do is we're going to try and work our way to figure out what that t1 is. So sn, or s15, was equal to 93.75, which is equal to n15, all multiplied by t1, we don't know what it is, plus tn was 11.5, all divided by 2. A little bit of algebra right here. What I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to kind of do a couple things in one step. To get rid of this 2, we're going to cross multiply it here. To get rid of this 15, we're going to divide it here. So we have 93.75 all multiplied by 2 over 15 is equal to T1 plus 11.5. Okay, so let's use our uh, calculator here. We'll take 2 and we'll multiply it by 93.75. We get like so and divide by 15. And we have a solution of 12.5, which is equal to T1 plus 11.5. And now to get T1 by itself, we're going to subtract 11.5. We get T1, or the first term is equal to 1. So, very good. Now, since they were asking, going back to the question here, what is the sum of the first, or not the sum, determine the first three terms, we know that the first term is 1. And we know the common difference was 0.75, so this one has to be 1.75 and 2.5. Not too shabby. All right. And lastly, word problem. Students' favorites. All right. This is a common word problem that they like to give, uh, ones with cans stacked on, on one another. Okay, example four. The bottom row in a trapezoid had 49 cans. Each consecutive row had four fewer cans than the previous row. There were 11 rows in the trapezoid. How many cans? So. To remind you what a trapezoid looks like, there's basically two parallel lines, like so, and then um, there'll be two lines kind of maybe coming down like this. So let's say this bottom line right here had 49 cans. Then the next one is going to have, uh, what well they say, four fewer cans. This one had 45, and so on. All right. So we're trying to figure out how many cans were in this trapezoid together. So let's start out with the information that we know. We know that the first term, Okay, and so what I mean is like the first term being there's 49 cans in the first uh, row, then there's 45, then there's 41, dot, 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 dot. Um, I know that the first term is 49. What else do I know? I know there are n, there's 11 rows. I know the common difference since they're going down by 4. You've got to be careful here. A lot of people might put positive 4. We need to be subtracting 4. Here's what we do not know. We don't, do not know what the 11th term is. Okay, we don't know how many are in that top one, so we'll leave like that as a question mark. And we don't know the sum, all right? But when both of these are missing, if re you recall, what we'll do is we use that second equation. As you'll see how nicely this will work. Sn is equal to n all multiplied by 2 times the first term, plus our common difference times n minus 1, all divided by 2. Okay, and I'll show you here a nicer way to use brackets. I've been a little bit sloppy so far in this lesson, but... Um, you guys might like this a little bit better. So, anyways, let's use a different color here. N, the number of terms we have is 11. Okay, and what you can do to differentiate your brackets is on the outside use some square ones like this. So then we'll go 2 times the first term, which is 49, plus our common difference, negative 4, 